are surprisingly urbanised. Well over 80% of us live in urban areas. Despite that, we do all own a cracker of a farm, one of the greats, Molesworth, inland from Hanmer Springs. It's a place so vast that one side of the property gets an average rainfall per annum of 600 millimetres. The other side, five times that. That's a big farm. Its history is just as diverse and now well documented in a book just released. To celebrate its launch, we were invited to join a Molesworth muster. So three weeks ago, while the rest of the nation was gripped by the America's Cup, reporter Jendi Harper and cameraman Jabulani in the belly headed for our hills. 180,000 hectares, bigger than Stewart Island, the largest farm in New Zealand. Rivers, lakes, rolling hills and mountain ranges, on and on it goes. The shadow of our helicopter, the only sign of life. I thought I'd worked on some big places, but they had nothing compared to this. They're like ram paddocks compared to this. <laughs> yeah, no, this, <laughs> is, yeah, this is unreal. Just unreal. We'll only see a small fraction of this farm as we join a spring muster on the mighty Molesworth. I'd been pre-warned, but still his handshake was a revelation. Jim Ward is the manager here. Not the owner? No. no. Would you like to be? No. No? Why no, not? All, all, all Kiwis own it. I'm a Kiwi. So That's I own enough. it? You own it? Yep, a bit we, of it? We all do. Four million of us. In 1938, the owners walked off this land undone by rabbits and weather and hard times. The government took over. <whistles> Astute farmers were hired as managers. They've been just three in 70 years. Stand, Dudley! <whistles> and now Molesworth is a money-making mega farm. There's about six there, and obviously we're here. Andrew, if you go up, up and initially with Jared, yeah. and then swing onto this country in here. This spring, they are bringing in the weaned cattle for TB testing. Right, enough of that. Let's get going. Right on. Rounding them up from the mountains and driving them through the valleys to the plain. At the end of each day, they stop to rest the cattle, the dogs, and themselves. So this is Half Moon Hut. This is our accommodation for the night. Is it wrong that the first thing I clocked was the bottle of whiskey on the windowsill? And this must be the pantry, very traditional. The bread, the tea, and the marmite, and the bacon, and the eggs. I hope Mr. Thomas found a well-stocked pantry when he stayed in 97. Here's one in Manara, Stockman, 1985, 86 and 87. T-top, dossed down here in 1962. This one's good, they've actually written a wee poem. Land of rock and rivers deep where cattle run with scabby sheep. Trampers paradise, shooters hell. Clarence River, fear thee well. Scabby sheep aren't held in high regard on this high country station. They done sheep here, Moreno? No. No, sheep die here pretty quick. Why is that? Well, we kill them for dog taker every month. <laughs> so the hungry dogs eat the scabby sheep with relish, but what do the cattle eat? From the air, this land looks so barren. You may have passed directly over at altitude and thought the same. Slim pickings, but pickings plenty for these grazers. Everybody asks that. <laughs> oh, you only had to look at them, they're in pretty good nick. They are. So that you graze certain areas at certain times of year and you allow a bank of feed to come away then. What's the biggest challenge about a farm this big, managing a farm this big? I don't think it's the size of the property that makes the challenge, it's the environment you're in. And it doesn't matter if you've got a drought in Northland or a flood in Southland or a big snow in Molesworth, your duty of care is with the stock. That's what you hear for first and foremost, above anything else. And for Jim, that duty of care extends to all his four-legged friends. Just, just, you know, they've got to be out here overnight. And I'm all tucked up in a sleeping bag, so maybe, maybe they should be too, eh? The horses have their covers on too. 
Night falls, cold and quick and quiet. And here's dinner. No scabby sheep in this pot, merino mutton. After dinner, Jim checks in with wife Tracy. Um, just a couple of messages. We're keen to hear how the America's Cup is panning out. And then we won one, so we've got two more to go. Oh, oh okay, cool, cool. Back home on the morning we lost, I think of Jim and his team, oblivious, unaware, and wished I was still with them. And then it is time to turn in. Jim prefers the porch, with one side open to the elements. Good night, JB. <laughs> Good night, Jim. <laughs> We wake to find the whiskey has evaporated overnight. Must have been the cold. There is a frosty tinge. Where are you heading today? Going down the Dillon to the Clarence Flats. We'll leave the mob there and then we'll take them to Bush Gully tomorrow, TV testing. Andrew and Dan hope they will find the sun or it will find them further down the valley. So it's 7 a.m. The boys are off on their muster, they've got a long day ahead of them. So why do they come to Molesworth? Well, they say, these guys, that they're living the dream. And each, even at the age of 22 and 19, they say this is on their bucket list. I mean, it's Molesworth, so, yeah, all right, it's just always been legendary. So, I feel quite honoured to be here, in a way. We've tried to make Molesworth into not just a something you can put on your CV, but something you learn a lot with. The day they turn up here, we ask them to step up. I wouldn't mind doing at least three seasons, two or three, yeah. Yeah, one would only sort of just be a taster. Mm. Well, this is my first season, so I think it would probably take two or three to, to get your head around it. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly yeah. to see a bit of it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. these stations down here, Hossack Station, Cloudy Range, I'd imagine they're pretty big farms. So. Yeah, they are, yeah. <laughs> and then you look at this, yeah. and it just takes up the whole rest of the map as Molesworth. There are places in these parts which Jim has yet to ride and he's been here 12 years. These lads are newbies, no saddle sores yet. Nah, not no. yet. Not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Only sort on day of, two. Yes, it's only yeah. day two, so we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. No, it should be right there. Be right. Over the winter, just Jim, Tracy and a married couple man the fort. In summer, it's a hive of activity. Very hot in the summer. How hot? Oh, over, oh, I don't really know. Just bloody hot. <laughs> and with the heat comes the people, the public, the part owners. The road, which runs right through Molesworth, opens Labour Weekend. A steady stream of mostly enjoyable encounters. I was just having my lunch on the side of the road and a couple pulled up with two little kids and the little boy hopped on my horse and he'd never been near a horse in his life. They were from the inner city of Auckland. And, <laughs> and then there was the family that wanted in winter to drive their Suzuki Vitara through a swollen Acheron River. Jim struggles to get a six ton truck across it. And you see that damn every day. You see some people and you think, oh, go away. Cue our turn to leave reluctantly. Another handshake better with gloves on. Time to leave Jim's office and head back to mine. <laughs>